Hello and welcome to Tuesday's maths lesson. The first thing we're going to do is our starter task. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and have a go at answering these two questions, focusing on the divisions and the part whole models or what we discuss as partitioning. I'm now going to go through the answers. So if you're not quite ready, pause the video. For the first one, we had nine divided by three. So we are dividing nine by three, which gives us one, two, three. And we can link that to our times tables that three times three equals nine because division is the inverse, which means the opposite of multiplication. Now we've looked at this quite a lot, the relationship between nine and 90, for example, and we know that 90 is 10 times bigger than nine. So hopefully that will give you a hint with the answer. So again, we're gonna split 90 equally by three, and we now have 10, 20, 30, and 30 is 10 times bigger than the three over here. We then had to complete the part whole model. So we had 39 and we were separating it into tens and ones. So the three represents 30 and the nine in the ones represents nine. In 42, the four represents 40. Oh, apologies. And the two represents our ones. And in 42, so now we've separated it and partitioned it not just into tens and ones. We've partitioned it into 30. So you need to think how much larger than 30 is 42, which is 12, because 30 plus 12 makes 42. So if you've made any mistakes on that, why don't you get a green pen or pencil out and have a go at editing it? Today, we're going to be dividing by a two digit number by a one digit number. So we're continuing with what we were looking at yesterday. We need to understand that dividing is the same as sharing and grouping, that to partition numbers into tens and ones can be helpful, and where possible using place value counters or something equivalent to help you can be quite useful. Reflecting on what we did yesterday, yesterday we started dividing and we used place value counters on partitioning to help us. And today we're gonna to move that forward. One thing that I think is really important when we're using the word divide is understanding that different words can also have that same meaning. So division is the main understanding of what this symbol means here. But when a question uses any of these other words, it's also meaning that you need to divide. So if you're putting something into group or grouping it, if you're sharing something, halving, because that's the same as dividing by two, if we're splitting it into halves, sharing equally, equal groups and share. So all of these terms represent the calculation of division. So if you ever hear those, you should instinctively know that you need to divide. We've got a calculation here and it says 48 divided by four. So we need to work out what happens when we group 48 into four equal groups. I've put the place value counters here to help us. So if we start with our tens, we've got four tens. And if we group those equally into four, so we're gonna have one 10 in each group. We then need to look at our ones. We've got eight and we're sharing eight by four, which an eight divided by four. Have a think what it might be. So I've put one in each of those now and I've got four left which means I can share it equally. So we now need to see how many we've got in each group. So if I was to circle here, that means that 48 divided by four equals 12. Remember the one represents 10 and the two represents two. So what I'd like you to do is have a go at pausing this video and have a go yourself. But what you're gonna notice this time is that it's not quite equal because we're doing 42 divided by three. And the first thing you might notice is if we focus on the tens and we need to divide four and 40 into three groups. Ooh, let me just send this to the back. We can put 10 in each group. 
but we've got 10 left over. And we've also only got two ones, so we can't share that equally. So have a think about what it is we might need to do. Hopefully you might have thought of the word exchange. And we know that we can exchange 110 for how many ones? Have you said 10? Hopefully. So we can exchange 110 for 10 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ones. And if you think about your three times tables, have a think about how many threes make 12. Let's start sharing them equally into these three groups. So we've got one, two, three, and perfect. We've got three boxes and we've got three ones left. One, two, three. So again, if we're now working out what the answer is, 42 divided by 3 equals 14. And if we think of our multiplication, that also means that we should know that 14 times by 3 equals 42. So what I'd like you to do is have a go at this independently. So pause the video and try and work out 96 divided by 4, what is it going to equal? I'm now going to go through the answers with you, so if you're not quite ready, make sure you pause the video again. The first thing we're going to look at is that 90, because remember that 9 represents 90, and we're going to group that into the 4, share it into those 4 groups. So I'm going to put 1, 2, three, four, and I've got enough left over to do it again. One, two, three, four. But now we've got a similar issue to last time. We've got one ten left, but how am I going to share that equally and divide that equally by four? Hopefully you've remembered that what you're going to do is exchange it, and you're going to exchange one ten for ten ones. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen ones. Now, if we think about the four times tables, is sixteen a multiple of four? Yes, it is, which should mean that we can equally divide 16 by 4. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We can keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4. And luckily we've got 4 boxes and we've got 4 ones left which means that 96 divided by 4 equals 24. And again, if we use our knowledge of multiplication and the fact that division is the inverse, which means the opposite, that also means that 24 multiplied by 4 equals, definitely not m, equals 96. Well done. So let's do another one. We've got 51 divided by 3 this time. Pause the video and have a go. Let's have a look at what hopefully you did. So we looked at the tens first and we knew that we could start sharing that those five tens equally, but we got to a point where there were only two tens left but three boxes. So again, we need to exchange, but this time we need to exchange both of them. So think two tens represents 20. So I'm going to have to exchange that for 20 ones. Let's get counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And if we already had one one to start with, that means we've got 21 ones here. And again, if we think about our three times tables, is 21 a multiple of three? Does 21 appear in the three times tables? Yes, it does, which means we should be able to do this equally. Let's go. So put one in each. Two in each. Three in each. Apologies, it's not very evenly done. Four in each. Five in each. Six in each. And look at that, we've got three left over and three boxes to put them in. So, have you worked out what 51 divided by three is? It is... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And would you be able to write a multiplication calculation to demonstrate using these numbers? Hopefully you might have thought that 17 times by three must equal 51. Or you might have done three times 17 equals 51 as well. Excellent. Now we've used the word multiples quite a lot here and thinking of that, what I've done here is I've got 39 divided by 3 and I've partitioned to it into its 10s and its 1s. So we've got 30 and 9. And 30 and 9 are both multiples of 3. So we can divide them by 3 to get 10 and 3. And if we add those together, we get 13. So this is a different way of doing the division as well. But Sometimes, if we just partition into tens and ones, it's not always going to help us. Because here we're doing 42 divided by 3. And if we partition it into 40 and 2, what hopefully you'll notice is that 40 and 2 are not multiples of 3. They don't appear in the 3 times tables, which means they're not going to divide equally by 3. So can you think of two numbers that we can partition 42 into that are both multiples of 3. Pause the video and have a think. What I've done is partition it into 30 and 12. 30 plus 12 is 42 and I know both of those are in the 3 times tables. So 30 divided by 3 is 10 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. And if I add 10 plus 4, I get 14, which is the answer to 42 divided by 3. So this is another way of doing it, because it's really important to be able to see different approaches to answer similar questions. Have another think. Pause the video. We're doing 51 divided by 3. How can we partition 51 so that both numbers are multiples of three. What you might want to do is write down the three times tables and see which two numbers, when you add them together, make 51. So I'm gonna do that. Let's write them down. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. Now what I'm going to look at first is the ones column of 51 because if we look at the three times table there is a number that has one in its ones column which is 21. And what do I need to add to 21 to make 51? I need to add 30. So I'm going to use both of those numbers for my partitioning. 30 and 21. Now, if I do 30 divided by 3, I get 10. And if I do 21 divided by 3, notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 threes make 21. And what we do then is we then add them together, don't we? 
and we know that 10 plus 7 equals 17. So with your work today, you're going to have a go applying both of these strategies. So your work, which is what you're going to be doing next. You've got a few questions where you can use your place value counters. So at home, what I'd expect you to do is just have a go at drawing the rings and try and use the yellow for the tens and the red for the ones. And then on the challenge sheet, you'll notice that you are going to have a go at partitioning and using what we've just discussed to explain how we can divide. So make sure that both numbers, when you separate the whole into the parts, are multiples of the number you're dividing by. Look forward to seeing your work, Chestnuts, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.